Hello and happy, beautiful day to you. It is so wonderful to connect with you. On today's episode, I'm going to answer a really great question that a listener sent in regarding the release process. And in her question, she said, how do you know when you're ready to start releasing? Would it be when you're no longer triggered or no longer going down the old brain pathway? or ways of thinking in that way? Or does that fully happen after the releasing? And so she has a few questions, but I I just thought these questions were really great because there's actually different layers to this answer, if you will. Now, the first thing we wanna think about is this, is anytime we go to release something, part of our mind is holding on to it. It wants to hold on to it for a reason. And it can be completely counterintuitive. You know, the example that you hear me use all of the time is this, is that unfortunately, you know, uh, somebody, a cutter, somebody who engages in self-harm may cut themselves and experience feelings of relief or euphoria or control or safety from cutting themselves. Or a person may be holding on to a trauma in their mind because they feel like it keeps them safe. You know, they may be... You have have had a trauma or maybe it was a car accident. And so what happens is they hold on to it and they remember it because they feel like it keeps them on high alert. And so then their mind in that case is wired to feel like it's keeping them safe to hold on to it. But of course, then holding on to it is also keeping them in a state of fear. And so it becomes this catch 22. Or another example is this, is I've worked with people who felt that, you know, they've had, you know, um, people be mean to them or felt like a victim. And then they started going into patterns of anger and they felt as though anger kept them safe. And so my point is, is when we look at this hurt or this wounding or negative patterns, the mind is always holding on to them for some reason. Even if we think about a pattern of sympathy for a moment, if somebody has a pattern of sympathy, they may feel that that's how they get love in life and or connection with people as they, that's how they get that connection. And so my point is, no matter what we're holding on to, there's a reason for it. Now, imagine if somebody feels as though they're holding on to anger and they feel like it's keeping them safe. What happens if they start letting go of the anger? Well, I can tell you what happens is that fear starts going up. The person starts feeling unsafe, which can actually impact their health even more than a pattern of anger. So neither one is optimal. You know, it's either the feeling of feeling anger is keeping them safe, which can affect a person's health or feeling completely unsafe and unprotected, which can affect a person's health. And so it becomes a catch 22. And that leads to the answer as far as releasing is ultimately what you want to do is understand why your mind is holding on to something and then replace that. And so if your mind feels like it's holding on to something like anger to keep you safe, then instead you'd want to say you want to replace that with, well, actually what's keeping me safe is X, Y, Z. So maybe communicate it. Or maybe it has to do with setting positive boundaries in a kind way. Or maybe it has to do with looking at the patterns and who you're attracting and what you're attracting. And so my point being is that, is that really ultimately the best time to start releasing is when you started to replace what your mind thinks that it's giving you or either rewire it. And that's ultimately what you'd want to know and you'd want to feel. So in other words, if somebody feels like holding on to anger or holding on to fear is keeping them safe, then what would happen if they start letting it go? Well, oddly, they're going to feel unsafe by letting it go. But then by holding on to it, they feel unsafe also. So again, it's this catch 22. They're stuck if they do. They're stuck if they don't. Either way can affect your health. And so If they start instead saying, well, I'm safe because of this reason and this reason, and they start to get new programming in. And so that's the reason that you'll hear me say all of the time when I'm working with people, even when I identify what the problem is, is that we have to work with the mind in a different way. 
We have to make sure that we've created a positive replacement first. And then when we go to release, it is much easier because what happens a lot of times is this, is people will notice there's a negative pattern or, you know, negative emotion or trauma or whatever it is. And they just try to start releasing that, not realizing that the mind is holding on to it for a reason. And further not realizing that a lot of times it feels like it's helping it in some way or another. And so it becomes this big struggle. And so to answer the question is exactly that is the best time to release is first, basically, once you've really understood why your mind is holding on to it and started creating a positive replacement, because then it creates for an easy release process. And also then you can genuinely release it because I can tell you all of the time. I've also worked with people who have had patterns where, you know, they've been working in the personal development or self healing for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And they say, well, I'm still struggling with the pattern of self love, or I'm still struggling with this hurt or this pattern keeps coming back. And they don't even sometimes realize that it's part of the same pattern. And because they're trying to let it go or they're cutting cords and they're doing all the things, but they don't realize that even if they're pushing it away with one hand and trying to release it and cut it and get rid of it, the other hand is saying, but I still need you. And so it becomes a back and forth and up and down and struggle. And so ultimately that's the answer is that we want to create some positive new programming and also understand why the brain is holding on to it, rewire the brain so it wants to let it go then we let go of the struggle. So that's when the best time to release is, is as you, as you really feel like you can replace it in a positive way. And that also can keep you from not getting triggered because I've seen people where they feel like anger is keeping them safe and then they go to try to get rid of anger, but then they feel unsafe. So now their pain or health issue goes up instead of down. So you don't want to trigger yourself to feel unsafe by trying to let go of something negative, even though it is negative, you really want to understand what it is and, and why your body's holding on to it and then release it. So just that self-awareness, self-honesty, and also understanding that our minds are very counterintuitive. And so, and that things can get linked up that make no logical sense at all. And, and when we really approach the mind in that way, that's when we can create radical changes. So that's today's quick IQ episode. So I want to invite you, make sure that you're following through, bringing in positive new mind programming, lifting and becoming aware of what you are really feeling, even if it makes no sense at all. Because I have to say, you know, if you've heard my injury story, wheelchair walker, cane, all of that, you know, what I found in my own mind was not logical to me. <laughs> and yet it was programmed into my mind. And so that's what I see all the time in people where they say, oh my gosh, I can't even believe that was there. And, and so we have to remember to think in that way and also program our subconscious mind, minds towards the positive. And so that's today's insight as far as releasing. And as always, I want to ask you to please do make a point to hit the share button on this episode, you know, share it with somebody you love, somebody you care about, or somebody you don't even know, because the more that every single person is happy and healthy and loved and empowered and has the ability to work with their mind and their energy and heal themselves, the better this world is for all of us. So please do make a point to hit the share button and please do make a point to have a most wonderful, loving, fantastic rest of your day. And I look forward to connecting with you on the next episode. We'll see you there. Thank you for listening to Heal Yourself, Change Your Life. All of the time, people reach out and say how much these episodes have given them hope or touched their heart or helped them stay positive in hard times or even woken them up to a completely new level of awareness of how amazing we all really are. If today's episode touched your heart or expanded your mind in any way, please do me a favor and be sure to share it with those you care about or those you know who really need it. As more and more people become empowered, it really will change our world for the better. That is the point and the power of these demonstrations is to create a radical shift in our world consciousness by showing everyone 
what we are all capable of. And of course, each volunteer will really need to follow through to reinforce their programming to maintain their results. But the point is for you to see that you really can create rapid results in your health and your life if you really understand how to use your mind. You're incredible. And I do want to be clear, though, that most people will not get results this fast on their own. I make it look very easy because of the discoveries that I made. You'll want to remember that there's so much more going on in our minds at a deeper level than people realize. That said, if you want to send me any questions or comments, come visit me on my website at brandygilmore.com slash podcast. And if you're currently experiencing physical pain and would like to be a volunteer on the show, you can sign up there as well. Lastly, please remember if you do have any health issues, you won't want to avoid your doctors. Instead, you'll want to continue seeing them and make it your goal to blow their minds with what you're capable of with your mind. Thank you.